Welcome to Alley Picked. Today, we're all about lamps. And I want to show you some basic techniques so you can repair, restore, and even repurpose almost any lamp. It takes just some basic knowledge and some simple tools. Stay tuned. The basic construction of most lamps are all the same. So we're going to start with this lamp. A friend gave me this lamp and said it wasn't working. So I plugged it in. You can see it went on for a second, but it obviously has something wrong with it. So let's troubleshoot this one first. The first thing to do before working on any lamp is to disconnect the power. One common problem our lamp may be experiencing is a bad connection with the bulb. Inside the base of the socket, right in the center, there's a strip of metal that contacts the center of the bulb base. Take a needle nose pliers and pry this metal up. It may have gotten flattened over time and no longer makes contact with the bulb. Well, this didn't work, so next we want to see if there's a short in one of our wires. To do this, we're going to use a meter. This is one I got for free at Harbor Freight. Look for a coupon like this and you can get a free meter with any purchase. With the bulb removed, you want to remove the top section of the lamp socket. You don't need to turn it, it's not threaded, but rather pull upwards while rocking back and forth. It should come loose fairly easily. Plug the leads in, turn the dial setting to the resistance setting, and turn on the meter. When there is continuity or a connection between two points, you're going to see the display change on your meter. If there's a break in the wire, there'll be no change on the screen. Touch one of the leads on your meter and the other lead to one of the screws. You should see a connection on one of these screws. Now test the other screw to the other plug lead. If you don't have a connection through both wires, then replace your AC cord. In our case, both wires tested good. Now onto the socket itself. Now on the socket, you're going to see one silver screw and one gold screw. The silver screw connects to the outside metal shield. The gold screw connects to the center. Again, we test for continuity. Our silver screw checks out fine. But notice that when I touch the lead from the gold screw to the center of the socket, we have no connection. This means that our socket is broken and must be replaced. Be sure that you flip the switch and test the gold again in case the switch was off. Fortunately, me being the cheapest man alive, I have a spare from an old lamp I disassembled and kept the parts from. Now you can reconnect your wires to the two screws. It doesn't matter which wire you use since the power is alternating current. It's a good idea here to bend the base of the switch housing outward just a little bit with needle nose pliers to ensure a snug fit. The spare socket I'm using is slightly smaller than the metal casing, so I'll wrap a couple layers of electrical tape around it for a better fit. Being right handed, I'm going to put the switch on the right side. Replace the socket, pop in a bulb, and test the lamp. Now, on to lamp number two. For the second lamp, it works fine. It just needed to be tightened. It was loose and wobbly. This is an easy fix. If the underside of your lamp is covered, you're going to want to remove it. Look for the nut on the bottom and find the appropriate wrench for tightening it. You'll want to adjust the switch to the desired position before tightening the nut. Make minor adjustments before fully tightening to be sure that your lamp is aligned properly. Give it a quick clean, plug it in, and test. Two down. I 
picked up this nice stained glass light at a garage sale for six bucks. I bought it because I can appreciate the hard work and craftsmanship that went into it. It only needed some minor repair and cleaning and it would be as good as new. It was missing a bulb so the first thing I did was test it to see if it works. This wire railing was the only broken part. We need to file off the black patina on the ends of the wire because the solder won't stick to the black patina. I'm using a 100 watt soldering iron. The solder is a 50-50 lead tin mix. This solder doesn't have a flux core, so I'll be applying that separately. The purpose of the flux is to help the solder to flow. Now if you need any soldering supplies, they're available through Hobby Lobby or Amazon. This is a black patina chemical for solder and lead, which when applied, it instantly turns it black. Or you can just use some black acrylic paint. Now we give it a dish soap and water bath. And we're as good as new. I picked up this lamp from a local rummage sale for a measly $3, but I saw the potential for this becoming a really nice lamp, especially for a cabin or a room with a rustic theme. Since the socket came disconnected, we should first check the electrical connections on this lamp. This socket has a push to lock wire feature. Now the wires look a bit frayed, so I'm going to restrip them and then reconnect them. On the socket housing, I'm bending the base inward with the needle nose pliers and on the top section outward for a snug fit. With all the electrical connections back together, we can test the lamp. The sticks look unappealing as they are. They have this uneven color, like the old finish wore off. So I'm going to give the sticks a facelift with a light sanding uh, using 120 grit sandpaper. And then I'll apply an American walnut stain, which I picked up for 5 bucks on the pre-opened clearance card at Home Depot. Well, since I don't have time to make a lampshade out of sticks, I bought this one for 10 bucks with a $10 off coupon from Lowe's Hardware. For the last couple of lamps, I'm going to show you not the whole process, but rather just the transformation possible with a little time, effort, and imagination. This light came off of my uncle's garage. I used an orbital sander and a lot of elbow grease, and I was able to restore it. 
It probably looks better now than it was when it was new. Here's a log lamp that my cousin Angelo made from some wood he found. I hope you learned a few things about fixing lamps. With a little imagination, you can make a lamp out of almost anything.